process of reforging Valyrian steel weapons hardly seems complex. Certainly not to the extent of it being so complex that only a handful of people in the world know how to do it. You'll have to train your left hand. And a decent swordsman knows how to use both hands. You'll never be as good. Actually, if you're one-handed, why not source another Bravosi swordmaster and learn the water-style dancing of sword fighting? You know, the style that is designed around only needing one hand. The war is over, the king is safe. The king is never safe. How many people in this city alone would love to see his head on a pike? Other knights protected the king while you were a prisoner. They will continue to do so when you go home. We're not even five minutes in and already a character has contradicted themselves within ten seconds. Get comfortable, folks. It's gonna be a long one. You'll return to Castle Rock and rule in my stead. Tywin thinks that Jaime is suitable to rule over one of the most wealthy areas in Westeros, despite being a glorified bodyguard for the last two decades and being a captive for the last three years, and therefore is probably pretty clueless on the current political and economical situations in the Westerlands. You are the Lord of Castle Rock. I am the King's Hand. My place is here. I don't expect to see the Rock again before I die. You do know you can have two titles at once. And seeing as you're capable of leading a massive war on multiple fronts from a single location such as Harrenhal, then I'd say it shouldn't be too difficult for you to rule over the Westlands from King's Landing. There is a precedent to relieve a King's Guard of his duties. The King will exercise that prerogative. And then the Ditch King's Guard travels to Essos and saves Daenerys' ass for the upteenth time and becomes one of her most trusted advisors. Oh wait. I don't want Castle Rock, I don't want a wife, I don't want children. Don't want children, you say? It'd be nice if you had come to that conclusion before you conceived free. For those of you who are just tuning into this series, the show earns an extra 10 sins for every episode that Pod the Sex God is in, until, of course, his secrets are revealed. Ah, here we are. As always, crowded roads and walkways immediately become completely clear when important characters need to use them. Yes, the king will be delighted to enjoy the company of a warrior as renowned as Prince Oberyn at his wedding feast. Will he? Passive threats of high treason are only acted upon when the plot requires it to. You're famous for f***ing half of Westeros. You just arrived at the capital after two weeks of bad road, where would you go? I'd probably go to sleep, but I'm getting old. If he arrived before dawn and went straight to Littlefinger's brothel, I very much doubt he'd still be going by late morning. No one is that good. Also, Carpital. I'm afraid I'm not on offer, my lord. Everyone who works for Littlefinger is on offer. Even the crew of his ship? Or his bodyguards? Also, isn't Oberon a prince, not a lord? And not a soul to hear. Oberon's reasonable, right? He only holds a grudge against the Mountain and Tywin. He doesn't dislike Tyrion, so he shouldn't dislike a common Lannister soldier. Something that he's assuming from the fact that he's singing the reigns of Castamir. Not something that is exclusive to the Lannisters and their loyals. <laughs> we'll need a few more girls. Girls, yes? Tyrion is no longer interested in girls. Well, speaking as a fellow second son, I've grown rather used to being the family insult. <laughs> Oberyn Martell's character was inspired by Tommy Wiseau. That started a war, and the war ended right here. And your father's army took the city. Well, Robert's rebellion didn't technically end until the invasion of Dragonstone by the Manis, which didn't occur until a year after Robert captured King's Landing. So have I. But what I keep hearing is that Gregor Clegane the Mountain raped Elia and split her in half with his great sword. I find it somewhat hard to believe that Tywin would allow the Mountain's deeds during the sack of King's Landing to become anything more than a closely guarded secret. I mean, it is basically a war crime. Tell your father I'm here. And tell him the Lannisters aren't the only ones who pay their debts. Oberyn somehow survives the eighth episode of this season. The director said, pull a face in a posture that looks like you're about to be raped by an Ewok. Where's Darren Harris? Where's Grey One? Gambling, your grace. According to Barristan Selmy, an endurance slash strongman competition qualifies as straight up gambling. So Worm is stronger than he looks. Hey, that doesn't look like Ed Skrain at all. Also, Dario made the fatal error of competing with an Unsullied in an endurance contest. Do you know what they did to my brother? How they sewed his direwolf's head onto his body. And my mother. They say they cut her throat to the bone and threw her body in the river. Does Tywin really not care that these egregious war crimes are public information? That's the same attitude that got Aerys Targaryen killed. 
Just saying. Work of art, really. Craftsmanship is excellent. A golden hand is just about the most useless thing to put on an arm stump. There's a reason why most people who lose hands replace them with hooks. But no, Jamie took Locke's advice to heart. Staying in the King's Guard means I live right here in the Red Keep with you. And Cersei just told you that she's going to marry Loras Tyrell, meaning her place will be at High Garden. I must question why the Wildlings have chosen to make a camp in a ravine putting them at a huge tactical disadvantage. You put your sword through a brother of the Night's Watch. What do you call that? He wanted me to kill him. A bastard son of a traitor. What's this c doing on the main council of the Night's Watch? I mean, yes, he was commander of the City Watch, but serving under Baratheons, who Alistair Thorne hates because he supported the Targaryens during the Robert's Rebellion. I lay with a wildling girl. You admit to breaking your vows, then? And those vows state he cannot father any children. As long as he didn't get her pregnant, he did nothing wrong. He's united the Thens, the Hornfoots, the Ice River clans, the S Giants fighting for him. Giants! Janos Slint saw the skulls of Targaryen dragons. Is it really so much of a stretch to believe that giants are real as well? There's a band of wildlings south of the wall already. Led by Tormund Giant Spain. I killed their warg and three others. They shot me full of arrows. Shouldn't Thorn or Slimp be questioning the notion of John killing a warg, as they also fall under the umbrella of stories for the children? You always know when a man is telling a lie. How did you acquire this magical power? I grew up in King's Landing. As did the c to your right, presumably. Perhaps I should just let Joffrey choose it for me. End up with a string of dead sparrow heads around my neck. You watch that. Even here. Even with me. Didn't Elena say here was a safe place for Sansa to speak about Joffrey and confidence last season? And now an army of former slaves is marching to her gates. You think the Great Masters are worried? If they're smart, Your Grace. Nah, I think they're all sipping champagne on Marine Force One, which appears to have booked it to the southeast recently. You were told to ride at the back of the train. Yes, my queen. But I need to speak to you about something important. A matter of strategy. My armies are severely bogged down in the friend zone. They may need some assistance, if you know what I mean. There's one on every mile marker between here and Marine. How can you know that if you've stopped the entire army at the first one? Well, Arya Stark hasn't been seen since her father was killed. What do you think she is? My money's undead. There's a certain safety in death, wouldn't you say? I'm sorry, but really. Arya was captured by soldiers from King's Landing and taken to Harrenhal and was the cupbearer to Tywin f***ing Lannister. If no one has seen her, it's because you told no one what she looks like. Discount Slenderman. Why don't you have any money? Didn't you steal anything from Joffrey before you left? No. And was the merchant you bludgeoned unconscious and robbed last season not carrying any money? You think I'm gonna escape? Why would you think that? It's not like you've tried several times already. You've got an aunt in the Vale, a rich Aunt Lysa. After I sell you to her, maybe she'll have enough left over to buy you that pony you want so much. The Hound, for some reason, knows this, and Arya apparently doesn't. He killed Lommy. What the f**k's a Lommy? Okay, goddammit, sin removal in progress. I don't care if he hates your friend, but not going in there. For some reason, after being spotted by one of the soldiers, the Hound decides it would now be safer to actually enter the tavern, rather than just leave. What are you doing up here? Just keeping the King's peace. No need. War's over. He says, after riding past the aftermath of a highwayman attack five minutes earlier. And what's life about a little fun? <laughs> but I don't need to tell you that, eh? She's alright. I've had better. Why is Arya still dressed like a boy? It clearly isn't working anymore. <laughs> the king. The Hound's normal volume statement of his disposition with Joffrey is somehow audible to the entire room, despite two drunken idiots laughing rather loudly around the other patrons of the tavern. So, you got money? Not a penny. A penny? I thought gold dragons and silver stags were the currency around here. Tell you what, we'll trade ya. One of our little chickens for one of yours. Shad, no. 
These idiots have the hound on his back, but opt to kick him into an angry rage rather than finish him off with a sword. Show rips off Saving Private Ryan. Also, there apparently was a shortage of fake blood this season, so they instead used good old ketchup. <laughs> Show expects me to have a boner that I have finally killed someone on her list, but I'm left wondering why we're meant to root for this sadistic killer. Winner winner chicken dinner. The Hound allows Aya to keep the horse, even though she's done nothing new that would make the Hound deem her capable and trustworthy enough to ride on her own. If you make it out of the woods, you win! 101 ways to sound like an absolute psychopath. So I feel like the entire point of this scene is so the audience remembers there is still absolute with concerning amounts of power in Westeros after Joff kicks the bucket. <laughs> the dogs somehow haven't managed to catch up to Tansy instantly, despite her wearing incredibly impractical attire for running for your life in the woods, and that she has stopped every 10 seconds to wail hysterically and or catch her breath. <laughs> Tansy hasn't been torn to shreds yet. To the proud Lannister children, the dwarf, the cripple, and the mother of madness. Oh, I'll clean it. No, I'll do it. You need a proper, discreet swordsman. As it happens, I have just the one. Euphemisms. Father, welcome home. Walder, this is Ramsay Snow, my bastard. A pleasure, mother. Okay, I know Walder Frey said that if Roose married one of his daughters, he would pay her weight in silver, but Roose is Warden of the North, and has the support of Tywin Lannister. I doubt he could be that desperate for money. As long as the Ironborn hold Mord Caelan, our armies are trapped south of the Neck. And how exactly did your escort of troops get north of the Neck? Also, when Robb Stark marched south from Winterfell, didn't he manage to stay off the King's Road with 20,000 troops, and make it to the Riverlands in good time? There seems to be plenty of room to go around Mord Caelan. Give him the razor. Wasn't Roos just about to have a shave? The Starks have always ruled the North. If Bran and Rickon are alive, the country will rally to their side. Even though the Umbers, the Car Starks, and all their vassals have already recognized House Bolton as their rulers. I know he's like a brother to you, but my father put a knife through his heart. How do you feel about that? No one in the room takes action to the imminent throat slitting. Also, how does Ramsay know the details of how Rob was killed? I don't think Roos would have sent that kind of info off before he arrived back at the Dreadfort. Take the moat for the family. For our family. And I'll reconsider your position. According to Roos, governing the Dreadfort and its lands for over two years, as well as clearing out Winterfell, isn't enough to prove him worthy of the Bolton name. But clearing out a castle of a few dozen tired, hungry, and morale-lacking Ironborn is. From House Tyrell and the people of the Reach, Your Grace, it is my honour to present you with this wedding cup. May you and my daughter Marjorie drink deep and live long. You know, as much as I got annoyed at the fact that notable characters are introduced a season late, I will take a sin off for Mace Tyrell for graciously filling the role of the total idiot in King's Landing. One of only two Valyrian steel swords in the capital, Your Grace. If House Mormont has a Valyrian steel blade, a house so small it can only supply a few dozen fighters to the Starks when they want to take back Winterfell, then I very much doubt Valyrian steel is so uncommon that not a single one of the visiting houses owns one and has brought it. <laughs> Books are made of paper, right? Which is basically thin cut wood, so a clean cut through a book that thick would require the same force as a clean cut through a log. Widow's well, I like that. <laughs> Every time I use it, it'll be like cutting off Ned Stark's head all over again. Joffrey thinks Sansa was the widow that was wailing when Illum Pe I mean himself, was cutting off Ned Stark's head. How many horses have you been with? I have enjoyed my time with all of them, and I have enjoyed my time with you most of all. But now that time is over. Why is Tyrion taking such drastic measures? I thought Tywin and Cersei didn't care about Tyrion's nocturnal affairs as long as they didn't take place in the Red Keep. What is stopping from Tyrion just buying Shay a nice house in King's Landing and visiting her periodically? Sire! I saved you well! Lord of life, show us the way. Lead us from the dark. Police! Yours is the no, my sister. How to lose the support of a core house in less than 60 seconds. 
Needs off. Gordon Ramsay. Also, the castle chef just served the king food that could poison him. You will not strike her. As you command. Perhaps the Lady Melisange could speak with her. Stannis just chastised his wife about disciplining Shireen in the name of the Lord of Light, but then he sends the Ryland's Red Priestess instead. Come in. Are you sleeping, Princess? Of course not. Why would a princess be sleeping in the middle of the night? <laughs> Loving that cinematography. I was just eating. Summer was eating. Your body can't live on the food your wolf consumes. Really? You're telling me this now? It took me weeks to get used to raw deer. For me beneath the f***ing tree, north, and a vision of some random weirwood tree tells you precisely where you need to go. Also, Bran shows no reaction upon hearing that Cersei had something to do with his fall. Also, I think I saw this shot of King's Landing on my PlayStation 2. Let it be known that Marjorie of House Tyrell, and Joffrey of the Houses Lannister and Baratheon. Okay, I know the Lannisters basically run the show at this point, but Joffrey isn't exactly a fan of his maternal family. Why is he still carrying them at equal value to his father's house? The royal house. Is the wedding over? What about the words of the seven gods or whatever? War is war, but killing a man at a wedding. Horrid. What sort of monster would do such a thing? Definitely not me, in like 15 minutes. Also, Elena says this with the aforementioned monsters in earshot. After fulfilling his job of giving Daenerys the title of Stormborn, Chris Hemsworth had to go into juggling to keep his Thor hammer. The amount of king guarding that Jaime is doing at this wedding is phenomenal. His entry will be four pages long in no time. If you somehow managed to put a child in her first, she'd murder him too, long before he drew his first breath. Would she though? I thought one of Cersei's primary philosophies was that a woman loves her children, regardless of the father. Don't serve your brother, your grace. Would you love him? Grace. Background activities cease during conversations between main characters, cliché. Leave this wedding right now, go to the kitchens and instruct them that all the leftovers from the feast will be brought to the kennels. Your Grace, a queen, Marjorie... The queen said they would is be... telling you the leftovers will feed the dogs. Queen is telling you the leftovers will feed the poor. Ah! Who's got the head? I know it may not be fair to criticise the historical accuracy of a dwarf show, but Rob Stark didn't actually do anything to root out the Ironborn from the north. No one seriously advised Joffrey to skip this show, as literally everyone at the table is currently fuming. Also, a few minutes before death, Joffrey's voice finally breaks. Be careful though. This one is clearly mad with lust. It would be a tragedy for the king to lose his virtue hours before his wedding night. I like how Tyrion thinks that Joffrey's wedding night would include activities that Renly very much enjoyed. Judging from the things that the sword has previously cut through, the entire table should be now be in two pieces. Also, is anyone really going to eat a pie filled with dead pigeons and, presumably, pigeon sh <laughs> Seeing as Marjorie and Joffrey are sharing a slice of cake, why is Elena poisoning Joffrey's wine that the two are likely to share as well? Idiots, help your king! Wait! <laughs> Jamie Lannister is the only King's Guard to show any reaction to the King dying. You have to leave. Cersei asks for someone to help him, but then tells Jamie to not touch him. 
Also, shouldn't Grand Mace Picel be running over here by now? He never actually left the wedding. <laughs> Even seconds from death, Joffrey still manages to make another asshole decision. And that's the second king in a row to die of causes related to wine consumption. You did this. We have to leave. Take you. Absolutely no one attempts to apprehend, or at the very least, call out two people running from the scene of an assassinated king. In this shot, it seems to be mid-afternoon, yet the sun is clearly setting in this shot. Then it cuts back to mid-afternoon. Where is she? I watched The Dark Knight too. No one leaves the capital. No one. Two people leave the capital, even under normal conditions, as I showed in season one. The border between the streets of King's Landing and the Red Keep are vigilantly guarded. It also takes Sansa and Dantos from mid-afternoon until after the sun sets to get from the wedding feast to the boat. Hang on. In this shot, they're never getting down some rocks, and judging from the spray, they're just a few feet above the waterline. Yet in the next shot, they're descending down another flight of stairs and are back in a built-up area. The capital city that is presumably on DEFCON 5 following the assassination of a king fails to notice a slow-moving boat exiting this dock area before disappearing into the fog. Also, Littlefinger's plan heavily hinges on using fog to hide himself and Sansa from view. As if there was no fog that evening. Why did you kill him? Because he was a drunk, and a fool, and I don't trust drunk fools. Although, you trust an agoraphobic, selfish nutcase, and a transparent, spineless child to keep your secret. Marjorie loved Joffrey enough that she actually mourned his death, requiring a handkerchief the day after. They brought me your grandfather's body when he died, you know. Made me look at it. What was it like? They took me to the Great Hall. There he was. The man I'd married, and suffered to father my children. A great doughy lump I'd sat next to at endless dinners and tedious gathering. Marjorie didn't exactly suffer a lifetime with Joffrey. I don't exactly know how saying that is meant to make her feel any better. More just as saying, you only had to put up with this BS for a year. Look at me! Googly Eye Funeral 3, Revenge of the Wine. Also, Joffrey's face should still be very much purple. Your brother is dead. Do you know what that means? Plot twist, Joffrey actually f***ed Marjorie weeks ago because he's an impatient prick and all. It means I'll become king. But Martin Lannister isn't a Baratheon. Okay, I'll stop now. And he attended three small council meetings in 17 years. He spent his time whoring and hunting and drinking until the last two killed him. That's no way to speak about the to be king's father. A house with great wealth and fertile lands ask you for your protection against another house with a strong navy that could one day oppose you. How do you know which choice is wise and which isn't? <laughs> what? A brain-dead child would know the logical move. 95% of the Seven Kingdoms can be accessed without stepping foot on a ship. Navies would only pose a problem to an empire that was split by seas, or relied heavily on foreign trade, of which the latter would not be a problem if you had the support of a house with a great wealth and fertile land. Please give the Queen a moment alone with us. Yes, Lord. All of you. Hang on. Only anyone went through the door, so surely most of the Kingsguard, Mourners, and Septons are chilling behind the pillars, and presumably jacking off to the activities that soon take place. You're a hateful woman. Why have the gods made me love a hateful woman? Having sex over your dead son's corpse. Skip! Gonna rain soon. Thanks, Arya. Never would have guessed it. Where are we? Yeah, fair market, I think. Okay, so I went on the official viewer guide map for Game of Thrones on the HBO website, and using the length of the wall as 300 miles as a reference, and drawing a natural route that passes near fair market, at the very most, the distance between the twins and the Eyrie is, at the very most, a 700 mile trek. Now, throughout a season of Game of Thrones, a full year passes, meaning that the Hound and I have had almost a full year to make that trek, on horseback, mind you, and yet only manage an average of less than 2 miles a day. 
Despite this, I and the Hound made it from the Brotherhood hideout near the Inn at the Crossroads to the Twins in the space of one and a half episodes, a trek of 600 miles, managing the space for about 7 to 8 weeks, or an average of 11 miles a day. Might book passage across the narrow sea. Fighters are self sword. Second sons could be. Seems like a good fit for me. Because of course you'll want to join a group of cell swords that are basically Daenerys' Queen's Guard at this point. I mean, who cares if you're back to serving stuck up monarchs if this one's got big tits? Okay, we get it. You're hungry as f even though you're traveling through some of the most game rich lands in Westeros. Lord of Frey committed sacrilege that day. He shared bread and salt with the Starks. Well, he certainly shared his salt. You're the worst f in the Seven Kingdoms! There's plenty worse than me. I just understand the way things are. How many stars they got to behead before you figure it out? The Hound lectures I on how men who can't protect themselves don't deserve to live, claiming that's the way that things are, and then implies the downfalls of the Starks was due to similar reasons. Yet the downfall of House Stark is mainly due to their failure to adapt to a rapidly changing political environment and upholding of honour to the detriment of their political and military position. The usurper, Joffrey Baratheon. I said those words when I tossed a leech into the fire, a leech filled with bastard blood. And you said those same words for Rob Stark and Balon Greyjoy, and neither of those two usurpers are bastards. I am now faced with a great opportunity, and I am powerless to take advantage of it. Great opportunity? The Seven Kingdoms hasn't exactly fallen into anarchy following Joffrey's death. If anything, it's going to be even harder to take the Iron Throne now. As with Tommen on the throne, Tywin can exercise even more control over the realm, his armies and his navies. Also, throwing a couple of leeches into the fire filled with Gendry's blood is all it took to clear out the False Kings, then why did you go into open rebellion in the first place? Surely you could have done your sorcery in the dusty corner of Dragonstone, marked Joffrey, Tommen and Marcella for death, and then you would have gotten the throne just given to you. You're late. Oh, sorry, Princess. I thought you weren't coming. Is there something you're not telling us, Davos? I suppose if you work for the Iron Bank of Bravos, and each one of your gold barges is worth half a kingdom, you tend not to be overly concerned with the kind of distinction. It takes reading a fictional storybook with his king's daughter to have an epiphany that the Iron Bank exists. I promise to come back and visit whenever I can. What kind of drugs was Sam smoking when he thought that sending his friend's own girlfriend to work at a brothel whose main patrons are the bad crowd of the Night's Watch would make her less likely to be abused than keeping her at Castle Black, where he trusts many people to keep an eye out for her such as John, Maester Raymon, Hob, etc. It is my firm belief that a transition shot centred on a girl's butthole garners 20 additional sins for the but why do value alone. Okay. I haven't had belly laughs like that for a while. Some believe the sky is blue because we live inside the eye of a blue-eyed giant. Wasn't that giant named Macumbra or something? The king is dead. The Greyjoys are in open rebellion. A wildling army marches on the wall. <clears throat> and who, may I ask my friend, told you of said army? The Night's Watch, whose leading counsellors denies the existence of said army? I brought you some wine, my lord, but they took it from me. A noble effort. They didn't find the candles, though. Quill, some parchment, duck sausage, almonds, and some hard cheese. And they found the wine, did they? Maybe wine's just been made illegal to consume while Bobby B. Winery is put under investigation. Pod. There has never lived a more loyal squire. It said somewhere in my script to make an unfunny joke about Pod's rob but I couldn't find one. Mother says it's time to eat. What's she got boiling? No, wait, wait, let me guess. Potatoes. Potatoes! Discount Ireland. I'm going to eat your dead mama, and I'm going to eat your dead papa. Go tell the crows at Castle Black. Thanks for the icebreaking tips. I've never had the confidence to introduce myself to the crows. Also, the Night's Watch is supposed to offer protection to these hamlets in exchange for resources. I'm surprised this area is still populated at all. The wildlings breach the wall, they roll over everything and everyone for a thousand miles before they reach an army that can stop them. I assume you mean the armies of House Bolton. First of all, the bulk of the northern armies are still trapped south of the Neck, and the Ironborn still hold Moat Caelan. Second of all, 
I think even a fully united Westeros would struggle to repel an army of 100,000 savage soldiers. Rangers returning. Everyone in this room knows what a single blast signifies ass. We need to ride north and kill them all. We just went over this bar. Justice can wait. It's not about justice. I told the wildlings we had over a thousand men at Castle Black alone. Do you really think that Mance will mount an easier to repel attack against the wall if he thinks there are more brothers there than there actually is? Also, no one can really blame John for far overestimating the manpower of Castle Black. John, Sam, Ed, and Gren were the only ones of 300 men to return from the Great Ranging. And I think they also assumed that Alistair Thorne would find a replacement for Yorin and actually attempt to recruit more soldiers to the cause. And it's not too late either. You've got a few months before Mance arrives. Plenty of time to send ravens to, say, House Bolton, and then vassals to send some men, now that the war with the traitorous Starks of Winterfell is finished. A single rider. A champion of Marine. They want you to send your own champion against them. What? And if Daenerys' champion kills the Moonies' champion, they'll give her the city? And if the Moonies' champion kills Daenerys' champion, they'll expect her to turn around? He says that we're an army of men without man parts. He claims you are no woman at all, but a man who hides his cock in his own asshole. Not even Amelia Clarke can help but laugh at the big funny 2014 joke winner man. I was the last to join your army. I'm not your general, or a member of your Queen's Guard, or the commander of your Unsullied. My mother was a whore. I come from nothing. And before long, I will return to nothing. Let me kill this man for you. Although you are the commander of her second sons. Unlike the Unsullied, if Daria Naharis is killed, the second sons could just elect a new leader who isn't interested in serving Danny, and off they go. <laughs> Sadly, Danny probably killed at least a couple of slaves due to the flying wood shrapnel. My name is Grey Worm. I come from the Summer Hills. You can recall several times in Season 3 that Grey Worm seems to perfectly understand the common tongue, but here Masande appears to be just teaching him the basics of the common tongue. Perhaps one day you will return to the Summer Isles. I don't want to return. Eban Senajo Paiske. Kill the master. I know you've been suffering your whole life, but slavery hardly seems to be a new thing. Therefore, children born into wealthy families were probably as indoctrinated into their roles as masters as slaves were into the roles of slaves. More likely than not, very few masters are inherently evil with the majority of them just living how they've been brought up to do. Also, I find it ironic that a show comes across as pushing an anti-slavery agenda, but then replaces slavery with feudalism. You'll have to continue later. It's time. Daenerys says it's time in the middle of the day, but then it cuts to an infiltration scene in the middle of the night. In a city that is basically under siege, absolutely no one notices a small army of unsullied infiltrating the city walls across an open beach. I assume this is where the slaves of marine sleep, and from the look of it, there's at least a hundred or so of them in here, and the masters of marine couldn't spare at least one or two guards to watch them sleep, just to ensure that they're actually asleep and not planning a rebellion. So basically, Grey Worm says that there are three slaves for every master. However, the masters did have guards, who I assume are not slaves, or the masters would have been killed long ago. Even someone with the most basic training and armor should be more than capable of taking out at least three or four malnourished, untrained slaves before going down. Seeing as the Targaryen flag is hanging there, the slaves would have taken the Great Pyramid by now, so the revolt is most likely a success at this point, and the show failed to show any of that, mostly likely for the reasons I've already mentioned. There's literally no reason for Jamie to not make creative use of the fact he can stick anything on his right arm to use in combat. He hated the little sure, but who didn't? And poison's not his style. Or murder, for that matter. Yeah, he usually leaves that stuff up to me. Why is Bronn still breathing? To tell you the truth, this isn't so bad. Four walls, 
popped a piss in. This cell looks far too nice for a prisoner who is on trial for killing the king. What happened to those dark cells that Ned was imprisoned in? Ben, there's really nothing else to say. What do you want me to do? Kill the guards? Sneak you out of the city in the back of a cart? I'm the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. There are likely guards stationed right outside of this door. If the killer threw himself before the Iron Throne, confessed to his crimes, and gave irrefutable evidence of his guilt, it wouldn't matter to Cersei. She won't rest until my head's on a spike. Isn't that what she's been trying and failing to do since you were born? Brother was Sodontus. You used him to get me out of King's Landing, but you would never trust him to kill the king. Why not? Because you're too smart to trust a drunk. Although he did trust a drunk. He trusted a drunk to whisk you away safely from the Purple Wedding, and if you were caught, well, like Littlefinger said, it wouldn't have taken long for him to spill the beans as to who put him up to it. Then perhaps it was your husband? No. How do you know? It just do. You're right. He wasn't involved in Joffrey's death. Everyone is currently assuming that Tyrion did have something to do with Joffrey's death, on the basis that he conspired with Sansa, his wife. A man with no motive is a man no one suspects. You always keep your foes confused. If they don't know who you are or what you want, they can't know what you plan to do next. Even though everyone knows that you will do literally anything and everything to further your political position. If anyone knew that you were within 50 miles of the Purple Wedding, you would very quickly become a primary suspect. So many men. They risk so little. They spend their lives avoiding danger. Then they die. I'd risk everything to get what I want. Okay. Shoei earns an extra 100 sins because it's at this point in the series that Littlefinger's plan becomes an incoherent mess that only serves to further the plot. He decides to align himself with houses that are a massive step down compared to the opportunities that being allied with House Lannister offered, and basically just becomes a plot device to force Sansa down a path that allows her character to develop. I was to be given to some Targaryen or other. Marrying a Targaryen was all the rage back then. But the moment I saw my intended, with his twitchy little ferret's face and ludicrous silver hair, I knew he wouldn't do. So you instead seduce Luthor, someone who you have described on multiple occasions as a fat, tedious and complete idiot. But you look nice in his twenties, I guess. Evening before Luther was to propose to my sister, I got lost on my way back from my embroidery lesson and happened upon his chamber. <laughs> Thought training. Gren and I were helping them. Gren's a ranger. You're a steward. Maybe you forgot that while you were off with your wildling bitch. Didn't Mormont officially make John a ranger? Doesn't Alistair Thorne respect the orders of his superiors? Also, aren't you preparing to mount a near impossible defense with 100 men? Surely that means you need to be training everyone you can? Captain Stark's dead. So if I told you to leave the capital right now and find Sansa, if I told you to find that murderous little bitch and bring me her head, would you do it? Why would you? Jamie's terrible at killing Stark children. How did you get past the King's Guard? King's Guard? King's Guard? I'm not a visitor, Your Grace. Word has it, I'm to be your bride. Isn't Tommen meant to be like 14? So, Your Grace. Yes? Tell me a secret. <sighs> make it stop. Hello, and you a proper fellow. That's a pounce. Stroking the cat. Sir Jamie Lannister. Knighted and named to the King's Guard in his 16th year. At the sack of King's Landing, murdered his king, Ares II. Pardoned by Robert Baratheon. Thereafter known as the Kingslayer. It's the duty of the Lord Commander to fill those pages. Has every knight of the King's Guard done some legendary deed that is worth writing pages about? A random t**k like Meryn Trant more notable than Jaime f**king Lannister? Also, I can think of a few things that Jaime did that could fill the pages. He defeated the traitor Ned Stark in single combat in the streets of King's Landing. He led an army of 30,000 men in the opening stages of the War of the Five Kings. He was captured by the Starks and held hostage there for the better part of a year without having his spirit broken. He then managed to make it back to King's Landing with a hand missing. Not to mention, Bobby B clearly trusted the guy enough that he considered making him hand of the king. There's still room left on mine. 
So I'm going to send you off on this wild wolf chase instead of me. He swore an oath to return the Stark girls to their mother. Lady Stark's dead. Gaia's probably dead too, but there's still a chance to find Sansa and get her somewhere safe. Didn't you say that there isn't anywhere safe for the Stark girls? I hope I got your measurements right. May I question how you got said measurements in the first place? I have one more gift. Also, Podrick looks far too enthused to seeing as his role model is currently imprisoned, likely to die, and he's basically being sold off to someone he doesn't know. They say the best source of names. Any ideas? You know, I share Sandor Clegane's philosophy on the subject of sword naming. What's the people name their swords? Lots of I know how hard it is, Sam, believe me. When you told me about Bran going beyond the wall, all I could think about was getting my strength back so I could go and find him. Why didn't Sam tell John this? I mean, the last time he told John any bad news related to his family, he was a decent horse away from breaking his vows and basically becoming a war criminal. And seeing how honourable Rob Stark was, he probably would have removed John's head if he somehow found his way to his camp. Also, after losing his brother and father, and with three of his four remaining siblings unaccounted for, John, for some reason, doesn't twist himself up in knots even more than when Rob declared war. How fast could they travel? A crippled boy being pulled on a sledge by a simpleton. I think the more logical question is, how long can they go before they are killed by direwolves, wildlings, the cold, or white walkers? They pass wildling villages. They could try and find shelter at one of them. The wildlings have joined up with months. Every village or sheltered place will be deserted. Isn't that the idea? What, do you think a populated wildling village would just welcome southerners with open arms? Our survival may depend on us getting to these mutineers before Mance does. They know the war. They know our defences. If Mance learns what they know, we're lost. Have the screenwriters forgotten the fact that Mance Raider is meant to be a former Night's Watch Ranger? Has Castle Black really changed that much since Mance abandoned the watch that he is completely clueless on how to attack it? Was Castle Black featured on some daytime television renovation show with Kevin MacLeod? I'm not exactly an expert on biology, but I don't think a human skull's brain cavity has no gaps in the bottom for the spine, spinal cord, and blood vessels. Go outside and feed the beast. You should kill that thing. You should shut your f***ing hole. Yes, you should kill that thing. It serves no purpose other than being yet another mouth to feed. Something that Carl clearly wants to avoid. Prester's last child. A boy. What am I supposed to do with him? What did Craster do with them? Kill him before they could grow up and do the same to him. All right. Don't need another mouth to feed. King's Landing citizens who join the Night's Watch are apparently the only kind of people capable of killing babies. Pink yard. They're more of a ruby red color, but carry on. You thirsty? Why would he be thirsty? Surely if he's been sleeping in here, then he would have melted some of that snow he's been lying on. <laughs> is it really that shocking to Rast that the puddle froze over in what is basically the equivalent of Northern Siberia? Do you hear that? If they're an earshot of the baby that is in the process of being sacrificed, then surely they should be being plagued by the blizzard and the obnoxious crows. Bran! Hold on! Hold Bran. on! Hold on! Bran, what happened? It's summer, he's hurt. They've caught him in a trap. Who? I didn't see, but they have my brother's wolf. How do you know that it was your brother's wolf specifically? Aren't you north of the wall, and direwolves are common? Also, I know I'm pointing this out stupidly late, but how did a heavily pregnant direwolf get south of the wall anyway? Either it swam around it in the likely frigid waters at those latitudes, or one of the Night's Watch castles let it through. Also, after going through all of that, it is mortally wounded by a stag of all things, yet still manages to give birth to six direwolf pups. There might have been Night's Watch once, not anymore. We're not safe here, we need to go. No. Bran, we need to go now. 
I'm not leaving without summer. And these former Night's Watch men are going to free him and allow you to be on your merry way. If I'm not back soon, we'll meet again. Jojen and or Hodor were still watching the keep, yet they failed to notice everyone there leaving the courtyard and moving in to cut them off. Hodor! This one's really dumb. He says one word, and you can deduce his simple, not actually simpleton statues. This is nice. Fine leather. Fine leather, even though he's been wearing the same clothes ever since he escaped Winterfell, which was a year and a half ago. Well, I like your curly hair. My mum had curls like that. And you want to f her because of it? Discount Skyrim. Hang on, if the Night King can turn alive people into white walkers, who are clearly far more powerful than regular reanimated whites, then why haven't you got f***ing thousands of white walkers from just kidnapping babies from wildling villages over the past 8,000 years or whatever? Also, the Night King looks like the product of a marriage between Darth Maul and Elsa. Long may he reign! Long may he reign! Now you can legally order me to bow down onto your... Fuck's sake! Also, did Mace Tyrell just call his own son gay out of excitement? How dare you look at the newly crowned king, like everyone else in the room is. There he is. Long may he reign. Long may he reign. Well, the current life expectancy of kings these days is measured on the order of a few years. We may be faced with an alarming number of weddings soon. <laughs> Especially alarming, considering the previous two major weddings concluded with at least one of the main figures dying. I won't even know what to call you. Sister. If you ever call me sister again, I'll have you strangled in your sleep. And we've taken the Marinese Navy, Your Grace. The second sons took the Marinese Navy. Who told you to take their Navy? No one. So why did you do it? Because for the last three seasons you've been banging on about reclaiming your father's throne. I just wanted you to actually go and claim it so you didn't have to listen to your bullshit anymore. Or are you past your Iron Throne bitching phase? Would that be enough to take King's Landing? The Lannisters have more. They also still have Wildfire, the golden snitch of repelling naval invasions. 8,000 unsullied, 2,000 second sons, sailing into Blackwater Bay and storming the gates without warning. I think even the most brain dead of spy masters will be able to give it a little bit of warning that a massive fleet is sailing their way. Certainly enough warning that they can fill a boat full of Wildfire and prepare to fill the Blackwater with even more wrecked ships. There's other news from Yunkai. Without the Unsullied to enforce your rule, the Wise Masters have retaken control of the city. They've re-enslaved the freedmen who stayed behind and sworn to take revenge against you. With what army? The Second Sons that are now loyal to Daenerys? And in Astapor, the council you installed to rule over the city has been overthrown by a butcher named Cleon. Didn't Daenerys torch Astapor with her dragons? A boy sits on the Iron Throne, a boy many believe to be a bastard with no right to it. They've never been more vulnerable. Jorah forgets that Tywin Lannister exists. I will not sail for Westeros. What then? I will do what queens do. I will rule. Until the subplots in Westeros have played out, then f*** it, we're going west, baby. What happens if an archer accidentally loses his grip on the bowstring? I'm just imagining the paperwork. All of your hood. A memorable shade. The Tully sisters apparently were the only women in Westeros to have reddish hair, a gene that was only shared with Sansa and Rickon. Mountains are impassable. If you want to get to the Eyrie, you need to go through the bloody gate. Doesn't matter how large your army is, if you attack this gate, you do it on this road, three men abreast. And get slaughtered like goats. Or you could attack the, along those ridges straddling the road, where the aforementioned archers were standing, 
Or we could just go for bronze tactic of climbing spikes. The fortress they built here has never been overcome, not once in a thousand years. What about Aegon's conquest? Wasn't that only 300 years ago, where he conquered all the Seven Kingdoms, apart from Dawn? Lysa and Robin decide to leave a giant pit of death partially open casually. That's basically the equivalent of having a hooded executioner standing next to the block in the middle of a room for shits and giggles. Also, Lysa shows no concern when her beloved son leans over the pit of death unrestrained. Robin, this is your cousin Sansa, but you're not to call her Sansa in front of anyone but Uncle Peter and myself. Do you understand? Sansa, this is my son Robin. It's a pleasure to meet you, Robin. Robin, show Sansa to her chamber. Take the back stairs. Lysa forgets that formal introduction comes before the awkward ice-breaking conversations. You gave me those drops. You told me to pour them into John's wine. My husband's wine. When you told me to write a letter to Kat, telling her it was a Lannister- In case you forgot, again. <coughs> Judging from the thickness of these stone walls, Littlefinger should be clinically deaf by the next morning. Oh no, you don't like them. I didn't like your husband. He used to pat me on the back a lot. Even though you spent most of your time during Robert's reign in de facto exile in Castle Rock. The Tyrells are our only true rivals in terms of resources. What about the Iron Bank? That you apparently owe amounts of money many times what you currently possess. Do you know how much gold was mined in the Westerlands this past year? I haven't a clue. And go on, your best guess. Pounds, tons, ounces. Doesn't matter, the answer's the same. It can't be. Seeing as you control the majority of gold in Westeros, and most likely the entire world, simple economics dictates that as long as the economy is still inflating at a healthy amount, the gold you have will simply become more valuable. If you owe them money and you don't want to crumble yourself, you pay it back. Investing the Tyrells in the crown will help a great deal in this respect. I like how Tywin's the only smart lord of the noble houses. Is Elena and Mace really that desperate to be married into the royal family that they're willing to shoulder a tremendous amount of foreign debt that could very easily overwhelm them? You started wars to protect this family. Turned your back on Jaime for refusing to contribute to its future. What does Tyrion deserve? For lighting that future on fire. Well, seeing as Joffrey's legally a Baratheon, his death doesn't exactly affect the Lannister dynasty that Tywin is attempting to build. Joffrey. Tough luck, bitch. Cersei. Walter Frey. Meryn Trant. Tywin Lannister. Tywin Lannister? What's he done personally against your family since the last time you recounted your list? I mean, he did condone and support the Red Wedding behind the scenes, but didn't come right out and say that was his responsibility publicly. The mountain. Also, once again, the mountain has been re-added to Arya's list. Is this her new tactic? To try and kill them via heart attack? I can't sleep until I say the names. The names of every f***ing person in Westeros. Only the ones I'm going to kill. <laughs> the Hound's been sleeping next to Arya for half a year now, and not once has he heard her recounting her list before she sleeps. It will all be alright. You'll be a widow soon. You'll execute that dwarf for murdering the king and you'll be free to marry Robin. I'm sorry? Robin? Robin Aaron, your son? Sansa's bloody first cousin? So cousins marrying, f***ing and having children is all fine and dandy in Westeros. But if siblings even lay a finger on each other, they burn in the deepest of the seven hells. Really? What happened to the age-old tactic of handcuffing the captive to the captor? Who taught you that shite? The greatest swordsman who ever lived. Syria Pharrell. Barristan Selmy, Karl Drogo, Rhaegar Targaryen, Arthur Dane, Gerald Hightower, young Robert Baratheon, Jaime Lannister when he started his sword hand, probably would all serve Pharrell's ass up on a silver plate. Any boy whore with a sword could beat three Merry Trials. Syria didn't have a sword! All armor, just a stick. He did knock out five other fully armed soldiers, all of whom he could have stolen a short sword from, seeing as he was practicing with a rather heavy wooden sword. Uh. 
people get slapped on this show even more than your average nightly soap opera on the BBC. Tron Tadama and a big f***ing soul. <laughs> oh, f***ing hell. You really believe Tyrion murdered your son? I know he did. We will have a trial and we will learn the truth. We'll have a trial anyway. Cersei basically admits that the trial that is pretty much guaranteed to result in a guilty verdict won't reveal the truth. What exactly did you do for Lord Tyrion? As it always is with this show, conversations between characters happen several weeks or months late. Whilst in Lord Tyrion's service, did you ever do anything remotely related to combat? I killed a man. You also participated in the Battle of the Blackwater in general, fitted his armour and weapons, briefed him on military events, and defeated three whores in single combat. Wait. Apparently, a lantern swinging is abnormal enough in winter conditions to warrant Bran studying it with intrigue. Either that, or he's really bored. Didn't some random mutineer come out telling you to be quiet? Surely that means he had to come in. This. This isn't the end. Didn't they just say they stopped you? You know, 30 seconds ago? You mustn't let anything stop you. They already have stopped me. Hand on fire that has never been seen before and is never seen again. Also, this scene immediately cuts from his hands being bound to his right hand being on fire, the rope's gone completely, and his left hand off and out of shot. Here, the night's watch. Instead of making use of the fact that the mutineers are drunken and unsuspecting, the night's watch suicide squad charges in screaming, alerting everyone to their presence. A little crippled lord. You're going for a ride, boy. Didn't Roos tell you to kill them anyway? What are you hoping to accomplish by taking Bran back to the Dreadfort alive? Jojen, Mira, free them. Go! It takes less than 20 seconds for Hodor to make his way back to the shack, cut Mira and Jojen free, and for the three of them to make it back to Bran. I can't tend dead mutineers. I don't. By my count, Jon killed at least eight, while Ed, Gren, and Locke each killed two each. After realising that they have just burnt down their only intact shelter within 60 or so miles, and having refused the safety of the Night's Watch, all of Craster's daughter wives subsequently die within a few weeks. Stannis' ship isn't on fire in this scene. Discount Colossus. Also, medieval engineering? No. Also, every time you sail under that thing, you're going to be compelled to look up its skirt slash kilt. The Iron Throne is currently occupied by Tommen, the House Baratheon, King of the Andals and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. Well, actually, Tommen only holds the first two of those titles. Protector of the Realm is actually being held by Tywin until Tommen comes of age. But carry on. Here, our books are filled with numbers. They prefer the stories they tell. More plain. Less open to interpretation. Surely by now, those books are filled with The Iron Throne currently owes us a tremendous amount, and we're probably not going to see that money unless we fund someone to kick the throne's ass. But of course, something something, a Lannister always pays his debt something something. And how much wheat and barley and beef and pork do you produce on Dragonstone to feed your 4,000 men on your 32 ships? None. But we are quite capable of sustaining them with fish and other seafood, Dragonstone is an island, after all. <laughs> Do you think they ever met a pirate who didn't tell them that joke? Do you ever think they met a pirate and didn't report the self-proclaimed criminal to the Bravosi Guard? Epic rescue mission montage cross-cut with a sex scene. So, are there no towns, villages, forts, or anything along the river between the sea and the Dreadfort? People there that could warn them of a mini armada of Ironborn rowing up to the centre of the Northern Power? Also, I've got a map of Westeros up and the Weeping Water River flows into the Narrow Sea, which is east of Westeros. Yet the Iron Islands are off the west coast of Westeros, meaning that either Yara sailed to the Neck on the Galleon, abandoned it, 
and then marched or rowed the several hundred miles between the neck and the mouth of the weeping water, and then proceeded to row up it, or they sailed all the way around down the west coast of Westeros, turning around past dawn, and then sailing back up the west coast of Westeros, passing through several Thunister and Manus controlled waters in the process. Not Kate in the right. Thank you. I very much doubt an axe could slit a throat like that. Also, they're very bad at covert missions. Good me. I'm always bad me. Yara, it's called hitting him over the head with the butt of your axe, knocking him out. Either Ramsay purposely cut himself up before fighting, or Miranda really needs to get her fingernails trimmed. This is turning into a lovely evening. I should sin all these obvious force mean one-liners, but no. You all. How fast can you run? Ramsay forgets that hounds are useless against armed soldiers in full armor with shields. I have a treat for you. A reward. Reward. Yes, Ree. Skip. We interrupt this showing of Game of Thrones to bring you life of Brian. <laughs> Drogon decides to burn an entire flock of goats but only eats one. Also, what did Danny think would happen if she allowed her dragons to fly freely around Slaver's Bay? That they would live off a strictly vegan diet? Game of Thrones, C-SPAN edition. My father spoke out against crucifying those children. He decried it as a criminal act, but was overruled. Is it justice to answer one crime with another? I mean, nailing someone to a cross and leaving them to die in agony would be considered a crime unless it was sanctioned by the ruling power just like any other form of execution would be. Your Grace, I ask that you order these men taken down so that they might receive proper burials. And what of the slave children these noble Marinese crucified? They were rotting in the sun as well. You took them down and buried them with honor, I presume. If you're so intent on the whole eye for an eye method of justice, then you need to include that part, surely. How many more? There are 212 supplicants waiting, Your Grace. 212. It's called a backrest, Danny, and a big goblet of wine. I know the Unsullied were pretty much trained to be human statues, but since when did the Dothraki become so devoted to their Khaleesi that they would stand around for several hours doing bugger all? Sandor Clegan has been spotted in the Riverlands, my lord. And Varus's little birds failed to recognise Arya tagging along. Did Varus even tell his little birds anything on what Arya even remotely looks like? My birds tell me the hound slaughtered five of our soldiers. I believe the phrase f the king was uttered. Um, what? Not only did Varus's little birds just see the hound in the Riverlands, but they saw the whole skirmish with Pulliver and his cronies? First of all, I never saw any six year olds in the vicinity, and second of all, the hound surely referred to Arya by name, or Start Bitch, or something of that sort by the end of the skirmish when granting her a horse. So surely the little bird watching would have put two and two together and realised that a fugitive was escorting a fugitive. And she has three dragons. Baby dragons. Baby dragons. Dragons haven't won a war in 300 years. Armies win them all the time. Yeah, because after those 300 years, the Targaryens never deployed them into battle, so they withered away generation by generation. He did like boys before. Wasn't he like 12 when he was cut? When I see what desire does to people, what it's done to this country, I am very glad to have no part in it. Besides, the absence of desire leaves one free to pursue other things. Even though human desire is at the core of all our decisions, perhaps not sexual desire, but human desire nonetheless. Why did they decide to dress Tyrion in nice clothes before he was removed from his cell he has likely been spending the last couple of months in? Which Lannister brother are you addressing? That insult could have been interpreted as being directed at the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. How would you say he died then? Choked on his pigeon pie. So you would blame the bakers? All the pigeons just leave me out of it. Apparently, George R. R. Martin based dwarves out of Game of Thrones off Tolkien dwarves, as in they can't help but keep on digging their graves deeper. He was last seen spiriting Sansa Stark, the wife of the accused, away from the feast. She wore this necklace the day of the wedding. Residue of the most rare and terrible poison was found inside. Okay, so case closed. Sansa murdered Joffrey. There's literally no evidence that her murderous intent was shared with her husband, apart from a set of idle threats that were set over the course of two years, and bears no relevance to the circumstances surrounding Joffrey's death, 
I think even Tywin should be able to see that. After we received word of Rob Stark's death, he didn't seem gladdened by the news. Perhaps his marriage to Sansa Stark had made him more sympathetic to the Northern cause. Speculation, not evidence. She wanted revenge for her father, her mother, her brother. She blamed their deaths on the king. Tyrion was happy to help. He hated Joffrey. He hated the queen. He hated you, my lord. I know everyone's pretty biased against Tyrion, but why does anyone in this room trust the word of a whore of all people? I will not give my life for Joffrey's murder, and I know I'll get no justice here, so I will let the gods decide my fate. I demand a trial by combat. I know it's a bit unfair for me to point out, but it seems a bit abusable if someone can pull the trial by combat card at any point, even if the traditional trial has all but found the accused guilty. That being said, I think Tyrion should be on trial for stealing the f***ing episode. 30 sins off! It felt good to take that from him. He knows I'm innocent, and he's willing to sacrifice me anyway. Even though he kicked off an entire war to rescue after you were kidnapped by Catelyn. I'm pretty sure he would only punish you if he was certain that you killed Joff. Because if you are killed, and the real killer comes to light, the Lannister name will be in serious trouble. You could kill a king, lose a hand, f*** your own sister, you'll always be the golden son. Kill. I very much doubt the last one. I think even Highwind would disown Jamie and Cersei if he discovered their nocturnal activities. Even if you lose, imagine the look on Father's face when you fall. <laughs> Our family name snuffed out with a single swing of the sword. Kevin and Lancel Lannister are still alive. No. Not Samarin. Hey, that doesn't look like Ian White at all. Also, the mountain just killed Discount Jamie Lannister. Cersei goes out of her way to walk over a recently disemboweled corpse. Buff, shirtless man in tight black trousers is not wielding a crossguard red lightsaber. Who am I fighting? Does it matter? I think it should matter. Hey, we just captured three near-grown dragons from some cunt across the narrow sea. Three dragons that could easily finish you off in three seconds flat. Could be food. Could be soldiers. Could be soldiers. I know Walder Frey is a complete dick, but in a feudal society, even the most asshole of soldiers know it's not a good idea to go around sacking farms for shits and giggles. Both Arya and the Hound sheath their weapons and let their guard down, even though it's now obvious that something armed attacked the farm and clearly wasn't killed. Also, this farmer looks like the Manus, which is rather ironic, considering how the Manus is ultimately killed. That's not going to get better. What? Spilt ketchup? But in all seriousness, have you ever heard of sterilising wounds by pouring wine on it, then sewing it up? Surely Aya still remembers her lessons from Septim Ordain, even if her last one was over three years ago. Time to go. Take matters into my own hands. <sighs> The thought has occurred to me. So why go on? Oh, yeah, asks this, even though she, and maybe Sansa, know more about carrying on against all odds than pretty much anyone else in the Seven Kingdoms. Nothing could be worse than this. Maybe nothing is worse than this. Nothing isn't better or worse than anything. Nothing is just nothing. That's a pretty flawed philosophy. By that logic, we should all kill ourselves, because feelings are bad, and we should just pussy out of the ups and downs of life. You were a father. Her captor. Bringing her to her arm for ransom. A fair exchange, that is. A fairly stilted dialogue this is. Also, what? Has this guy met loads of people who are self-proclaimed captors of little girls, and are open about their plans to sell said captive to the extended family? That the notion doesn't surprise him at all. Fair. No balance. No balance anymore. Discount Yoda. That's where the heart is. The Hound tells this to a girl he sleeps next to every night that has told him, on many occasions, of her attention to kill him. Also, since when has stabbing someone in the heart been the fastest way to kill someone? On this show, anyway, the fastest way to kill someone has typically been the good old throat slit. That's 
how you kill him. Even though I has killed at least three people by this point. Instead of having the guy with the sword just charge in and stab the hound through the back, the unarmed idiot who has next to no chance of killing the hound runs in instead. There's a price on your head. Yes, that's what the king does when you tell me to f off. The king's dead. He drank poison wine at his own wedding. The bounty on you is for killing Lannister soldiers. A hundred silver stags. Was this episode directed by George Lucas? For what reason does this nonce have to tell the Hound this? And did Joffrey just not care that one of his most skilled Kingsguard deserted him after the Battle of the Blackwater? But him killing a couple of Lannister soldiers is enough to convince Joffrey to put a stupidly large bounty on him? You were Yoren's prisoners when he was taking me to the wall. He told me he'd f me bloody with a stick. Your stick? What? Also, he supposedly joined the Lannister forces, alongside Jacken and the recently deceased Biter guy. And seeing as the Hound's bounty was only made known to the common Lannister soldiers, why isn't he in full Lannister steel plate armour? He on your little list. He can't be. I don't know his name. Why would he be on the list in the first place? The people on your list are those directly involved with the death of your family members, friends, or innocent people. All this guy did was mild sexual harassment. Hardly enough to warrant you killing him. You're learning. Learning? Literally everyone that Aya has killed has been either unarmed or completely unready for attack. I'd really like to see Aya manage to beat someone in fair single combat, or to beat someone who got the jump on her. Not only is the horn blown well after the gate has been opened and the party is walking into Castle Black, but everyone announces that it is Rangers returning without giving time to wait for a second or third blast. We saw their campfires from Osric's Hill. They'll reach the wall before the next full moon. Surprised you didn't ride over and say hello. The king beyond the wall is your old friend, isn't he? Is he not old friends with a few people in this room as well? Also, wow. I know this guy has dealt with traitorous Starks, but if he's willing to accept the idea of a wildling army marching towards the wall, info that has only arrived thanks to John's efforts, and why is he being so sarcastic about John's forced, now severed relationships with the wildlings? The tunnel's gate won't stop them. The bars on those gates are four inches thick, cold rolled steel. And they won't stop them. Remind me which order you belong to, Lord Snow. Oh, f off. Alice has preached as a practical and loyal man, but when he starts losing an argument, he just defaults back to, John's a steward, so f him, even though everything that he's been saying thus far has turned out to be true. You have new clothes. Do you like them? Eh? I thought Bronn didn't like capes. My wife is heir to Winterfell. If I emerge from this with my head still on my shoulders, I may one day rule the North in her name. I could carve you out a big piece of it. Even though the Boltons now rule the North, meaning that even if you're not found guilty, Sansa won't be heir to anything. How did you get in here? Your door is well guarded. It's your window, is not. And not a single one of the 8,000 Unsullied noticed the man scaling the pyramid to enter the Queen's bedroom. Send me to kill your enemies. Any enemy. Anywhere. Let me do what I do best. Ah, well, maybe after you kill Tommen Baratheon, Tywin Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Stannis Baratheon, Marcella Baratheon, and Shireen Baratheon, then maybe we can talk about women. Come in, my Queen. Please. I didn't mean to disturb you, my lady. You could never disturb me. Speak for yourself. My daughter has heretical tendencies, as you're well aware. I don't know if her doubt is real or simply meant to spite me, but whichever the case, she should stay home. Yes, she should. Even from the point of view of a non-Lord of Light fanatic like Davos, Shireen is the heir to the Iron Throne if Stannis is killed. Something that is rather common for men who go off to fight in wars against greater numbers. Jorah the Andal. Lord of the Friend Zone. Go suck a fat one. Also, why do people refer to Jorah as an Andal? Isn't he technically a Northman? He will accompany the Second Sons and serve as my ambassador to Yunkai. He will tell the Masters what has happened in Marine. He will explain the choice they have before them. They can live in my new world, or they can die in their old one. I'm getting a feeling that the show feels like it's been ragging on slavery-based civilizations a bit too much and is now seeking to paint slavery as bad, but necessary parts of old civilizations. 
Needle is probably the cleanest sword in existence since Arya threw Joffrey's old one into the river. You're doing it wrong. You need to burn away that horrible bit there. Otherwise it's going to get infected and fester. Hang on, Arya has a split lip in this scene, presumably from the slap the Hound gave her two episodes ago. Yet in the scene with the farmer earlier in the episode, she doesn't have it. Also, what does Arya know about wound washing and medicine? She certainly didn't learn it following her leaving Winterfell, and I somewhat doubt that kind of stuff would be taught to highborn girls. I know you don't like fire, but if you don't do it right... No fire. It'll only take a second. It won't hurt that much. No fire! Also, has something happened between Arya and the Hound since the fifth episode? Arya's gone from full-on hating the Hound, and yet despite him insulting her fighting style and the man who taught at her and giving her a massive slap, she now almost seems to like the Hound and certainly cares for him to a degree. Thanks to you, I'm a walking bag of silver. Not really. You weren't exactly in the Lannister's good books before you met Arya. Or have you forgotten about your statement regarding your disposition of the king that you proclaim to the king's hand as well as the king himself? Then where the Lannisters hold sway. Which is everywhere between where we are now and where we're going. Is it? From the look of the surrounding terrain, you're getting near the Vale, and the Vale is controlled by someone who despises the Lannisters. It was just like you said a while back. Press me to the fire like I was a nice juicy mutton chop. Why? Didn't you overhear the entire conversation between Littlefinger and Sansa? Where Littlefinger actually explains the reason as to why Gregor pressed Sandor's face into the fire in the first place? Intimate wound washing. I mean, for f**k's sake, half the time these fan fictions write themselves. I think we can treat ourselves to a feather bed for the night. Kidney pie is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I mean, just the other day we had 17 pie. A girl, pie. tall, red hair, very pretty. Her name is Sansa Stark, but she may be using a different name. Starks? For the third time in this series, the inn at the crossroads has become the setting of a random encounter between two characters that sets in motion major plot points. They were going to sell Arya to her mother at River Run, along with another prisoner. Big ugly fella. Foul mouth and a face like a half burnt ham. Not friendly. The Hound. I don't think the Brotherhood intended to sell the Hound to the Starks at River Run, but I digress. Still does not look anything like a direwolf. The whole way from Dorne, all anyone talked about was the monster that had been born to Tywin Lannister. A head twice the size of his body, a tail between his legs, claws, one red eye. The privates of both a girl and a boy. I guess I can see why you were disappointed when you found out Tyrion didn't possess those. I will be your champion. I know it ultimately doesn't matter, but if you killed the mountain, then Cersei would most likely kick you out of the city for saving Tyrion's ass. Even though it's currently snowing in Yeri, there is no evidence of such when Lysa nearly pushes Sansa out the moon door. Or you! When we get married, you can tell me if you don't like somebody, and then we can bring them back here and whoosh! Right through the moon door. And Sansa is meant to marry this guy? Why did you really kill Joffrey? Tell me why. I loved your mother more than you could ever know. Given the opportunity, what do we do to those who've hurt the ones we love? Even though Joffrey had nothing to do with the Red Wedding, it was Tywin and Walder Frey who organised the whole thing. What's that sound design? Squeaky pipes? Also, seeing as Lysa has gone crazy with Sansa before, I must ask why she would go anywhere near her if she has the means of easily killing her. Your sister. Littlefinger 2, this time with 100% less men of the City Watch. Also, surely there are guards within earshot that can call bullshit on Littlefinger's suicide story. Your baby was crying this morning. Why not bring that up with her this morning? Also, she hasn't entered a new room. It should be definitely loud from the drunken Night's Watch brothers. And now you dumb bitch. No, it's not. Her audio signals are the wildling standardized. Also, why would Gilly, someone who spent pretty much her entire life at the knees of Craster, know these wildling signals anyway? <laughs> the whole town drunk? Surely there's someone sober who would have noticed the wildlings entering the town. Doesn't Mance have peaceful intentions with the rest of the realm? 
He's said multiple times that all he wants to do is get the wildlings south of the wall. And the only party he's waging war with is the Night's Watch. If you're attacking defenseless villages, then you're pretty much guaranteeing the other armies of Westeros are gonna finish off what's left of you. This bitch just tried to attack a grit with a rag. I should never have left her there. Someone apparently made it out of Molestown and made it back to Castle Black to inform them. Yet seeing as a typical patron of the Molestown brothels is someone who likely joined the Night's Watch involuntarily, and seeing as pretty much everyone there was massacred so they would be assumed dead, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't simply run the other way. She survived Croster, and he was the worst I've ever met. She survived the long march to the wall. She survived a white walker for f**k's sake. Craster never hunted her down with an axe. Most rangers have visited Crasters at some point in their career, and Sam killed a white walker while Gilly did nothing. If they hit Moles down, then we're next. Okay, again, I'm a bit late in pointing this out, but why are the wildlings attacking the most heavily fortified of the Night's Watch castles anyway? Why not attack East Watch by the Sea or the Shadow Tower? They still have working tunnels, and have far less brothers guarding it, and East Watch at least clearly isn't any more difficult to attack, as proven by the Night King in Season 7. Grey Worm, so manly that even after his dick's been cut off, he still has enough testosterone to garner sexual attraction. My lad. The Dothraki think outsiders are ridiculous taking shame in the naked body. They make love under the stars for the whole Kalisar to see. Yes, Your Grace. But you are not Dothraki. Racism. Also, a 75 second conversation about Grey Worm's sexual interest is 76 seconds too long. Bring me Moat Kaelin. Am I meant to believe that Robert Baratheon's party stopped here on their way to and from Winterfell? It looks like it was owned by Count Dracula. And you say you're Theon Greyjoy? Yes. Why should I believe that? And why should you care? I thought the Iron Islands valued the skill and cunning over the bloodline of an individual anyway. You are fading from sickness. You are badly outnumbered. And you're hundreds of miles from the sea. Hundreds of miles? I thought Moat Caelan was acting as a bottleneck to the Bolton army trying to march home. If there is hundreds of miles separating Moat Caelan from the sea, there should be no reason as to why the Bolton army can't simply march around it. The Boltons will give you safe passage to the Stony Shore. Even though the most direct route back to the Iron Islands is to travel south along the King's Road, make a right at the Twins, and take a boat from Seaguard. Yes, I do have a map open. Well, our forebears settled the Vale thousands of years ago. We've fought off invaders ever since. And failed at least once. Or did no one teach you about Aegon's conquest? But I didn't need to hear from her. Moneylender, whoremonger, you've been licking Tywin Lannister's boots so long as I wonder your tongue's not black. What does whoremongering have to do with licking Tywin's boots? Well, I guess he probably didn't go celibate for 30 years. Strange that within days of your arrival you've married Lady Arryn, and she's fallen through the moon door. What are you suggesting? Littlefinger gains pretty much nothing from killing Lysa. He certainly doesn't inherit anything. And any power she did have is just funneled down to Robin, something that Littlefinger really didn't have to do as he was close to Robin anyway. Sorry, Lord Baelish. I, I have to tell the truth. Sansa does not tell the truth. What was Littlefinger's plan? Lord Royce, we met when you came to Winterfell. You were escorting your Sansa Waymar to the wall. Sansa Stark? Waymar Royce? You mean the first guy to die in this show, Waymar Royce? He seemed a pretty seasoned and authoritative Night's Watchman when he died, so I'd probably been there for at least several years, yet Sansa was only 13 in season 1. You tell lies right to my face, you little worm! Lord Baelish has told many lies. All to protect me. <sighs> I had no friends in King's Landing. Tyrion Lannister, Marjorie Tyrell, Elena Tyrell, Loras kind of, Varys, Shay. I thought Sansa was a terrible liar. When Lord Baelish tried to calm her, she struck him. She said she didn't want to live anymore. She stood on the edge of that moon door. He tried to reason with her, promised her she was the only one he had ever loved, but she stepped through those doors. Jesus, Sansa's gone from Abraham Lincoln to Pinocchio levels of telling lies. Character arcs, everyone. Once again, the crying girl method of gaining sympathy has yet proven that the Lords of Westeros have no bloody backbones. Apologies, my lady. 
and to you as well, Baelish. We uh, treated you a bit harshly. You want justice, Lord Royce? I can hardly complain about that. The Moondor operators were later convicted for their total disregard of health and safety regulations. Are you questioning our courage? I want to know which side you're on. I mean, do you support the Lannisters, the house that executed your friend Ned Stark? As well as supposedly poisoned your liege lord, John Arryn. What's this? A royal pardon. Signed by Robert Baratheon. Still not as slow as FedEx. Also, I thought Jorah already had his pardon. And if this was forged by Tywin Lannister, why isn't everyone forging incriminating letters to sow deceit into the high command of their enemies? This is the work of Tywin Lannister. He wants to divide us. If we're fighting each other, we're not fighting him. The pardon was signed the year we met. Well, f me. It must be genuine. Get the f out of here, you traitor. Why were you pardoned? Unless you're saying this document was forged? It is not forged. I have a feeling that I need to start wearing oven gloves while watching this show. That wine merchant tried to poison me because of your information. I stopped you from drinking his wine. Because you knew it was poisoned. Yeah, and he stopped you from drinking it. If he was still loyal to Bobby B, then he would have just let you die. That should be enough to prove the fact to you. But I guess we need Tyrion's arc to continue when he fucks off to Essos. Please, Gully. You okay. sold my secrets to the man who killed my father. The Mad King was killed by Jaime Lannister. You have until dusk to collect your things and leave this city. If you're found in Marine past break of day, I'll have your head thrown into Slaver's Bay. Why is Daenerys taking this so personally? Even though Barristan Selmy, while he fought for Rhaegar Targaryen, after he died, he quickly switched sides and joined Bobby B, becoming the Lord Commander of his Kingsguard, protecting the usurper that Daenerys hates with his life. If Danny is so triggered by the fact that Jorah spied on her for Bobby B, then why is she even allowing Selmy within 50 feet of her? Open it. From this day until your last day, you are Ramsay Bolton, son of Roose Bolton, Warden of the North. Why did Roose make Ramsay read the letter if he's just going to tell him the contents? Can Ramsay even read? Come, Rick. I'll be needing a bath. Ramsay looks far too happy at the notion of receiving a bath from Reek. Winterfell is still smouldering, even though it's been nearly two years since Ramsay torched it. First time I saw you, you were just a child. A girl from the north come to the capital for the first time. You're not a child any longer. That's not how to lead a conversation after entering a girl's room alone. They would have thrown you through the moon door if they found you guilty. That's not an answer. If they'd have executed you, what would they have done with me? Presumably married you to Robin, as Lysa said she would. Definitely something infinitely better than what Littlefinger has in store for you. Who would pass the bloody gate? The bloody hound. And his... Travelling companion, Arya Stark, niece of your lady Lysa Arryn. Then I offer my condolences. Lady Arryn died three days ago. What? And was she carrying all the money to the Iron name in her pocket when she fell through the moon door? If the Hound knows about Lysa Aaron, then he should know about Robin Aaron, someone who should be just as happy to pay for Arya, his cousin, either way. Arya's entire character arc is bull of the highest order. Shall we go? No, no, no. There's no kind of killing that doesn't have its own word. Cousins. Cousins? You're right. There is no word for cousin killing. Well done. Do you remember cousin Orson? Orson Lannister? Three and a half minute conversation about a retarded cousin. Why are the general populace of King's Landing booing the guy who's supposed to prove Tyrion guilty? The Mountain Squire is a Podrick cosplayer. You killed her children! <laughs> he survives this. I killed her children! Then I raped her! Ah! Then I smashed her head in like this! No. Also, Gregor Clegane basically just confessed to an egregious war crime, and also Sammy confessed that it was Tywin who gave him the order. How big were the feet? What do you want me to say? I want you to tell me what it was like to have someone. To be with someone, to love someone and have them love you back. Sam thinks that all there is to loving a person is getting in their pants. Figures. We're all gonna die a lot sooner than I'd planned. You're the closest I'll ever get to knowing. I'm sorry? But what are vows have to say about other 
activities is open to interpretation. I don't think Sir Alistair cares much for interpretation. Is Sir Alistair's word law? Surely Mace Raven would have the final say on the specifics of the vows, seeing as he has been around the longest, as well as being a Maester of the Citadel. Also, I just realised the Night's Watch is basically the Jedi Order without the Force and comprised of 90% criminals. Okay, John seen first down how wargs work and how Mance employs them to scout. Surely you should be wary of any kind of flying creature around Castle Black. Jon Snow is mine. Anyone else tries to kill him? I'll have an arrow for them! Even though most of the people here don't know what Jon Snow looks like. And what is it that couldn't wait until morning, Tali? Morning? I thought everyone here is expecting to die tonight. I don't. I love her. Yes, you do. No. Yes, you do. I don't love her, cliché. I met many girls when I was Aemon Targaryen. A future king always does. Even though you're a second-born son, so you were never in the running until your older brother drank wildfire or something. I'm sorry, I can't open the gate to nobody. Can't open the gate to nobody? Even if there are wildlings 500 feet away from the walls, chances are anyone who has the balls to walk right up to the gates of Castle Black are refugees from one of the villages, under the Night's Watch protection may I add, that the wildlings have since burned, put a sword in their hand, and they would likely be happy to kill a couple of the bastards. Also, just after learning the life lesson of letting go of lost loves, Sam is instantly reunited with said lost love. I mean, I guess we need something for Sam to do for the past couple of episodes. Jesus, everyone woke up instantly. I really need to set the Night's Watch home as my alarm. This guy has been sat in the mind of his owl for pretty much the whole night, even though Jojen said that walking into the mind of animals for too long can make the person forget how to be human. A burning forest doesn't really give any indication on how big an army is. A lunatic with a few torches could get that going in a few minutes. Also, I very much doubt that the glow from a fire even that large could be visible on the other side of a 700 feet high wall. You can say it if you like. We should have sealed the tunnel while we had the chance. Like you suggested. Even though you said that even a million wildlings couldn't do jack sh to that gate. It's the giants, John said, were the problem. I must ask, where is Mace Raymond going to be? If he isn't fighting, then surely Sam should be hiding Gilly with him. Unless Mace Raymond is actually participating in the battle. I wonder how that'll work. If someone had asked me my name right then, I, w I wouldn't have known. I wasn't Samuel Tarley anymore. I wasn't a steward in the Night's Watch or son of Randall Tarley or any of that. I was nothing at all. So Samuel Tarly took three seconds to do something that took Arya Stark two whole seasons to do. And even then, she kind of fails after the fact. Why are the wildlings risking giving away their position by sending Egret to scout? Why not send the Thin guys scouting out? This seems like a terrible idea. Why would you stop marching just after exiting your natural cover? Making easy targets for trigger happy brothers on the top of the wall. Where can I get myself some of that plot armor you're wearing, my dude? Also, why are they using flaming arrows? Surely that's just going to make it easier to dodge them, and having them on fire doesn't really help as the wildlings aren't using any kind of cover, flammable or otherwise. No! There is no way that anyone with functional eyes should have died there. There was at least four to five seconds for someone to spot the flaming arrows, then manoeuvre to a position that will not result in them being shot. Tonight we fight! And when the sun rises, I promise you, Castle Black will stand! The Night's Watch will stand! Even if Castle Black falls, that doesn't mean the Night's Watch falls. There's still two other castles filled with a few dozen other brothers jacking off while the wildlings attack Castle Black. Also, the way that Sir Alistair is delivering his speech is giving the impression that if the wildlings take Castle Black, then the whole realm is doomed. 
Yet realistically, the wildlings are just going to raid a few other villages, towns, and maybe one or two castles before they run into the Bolton army and all get flayed alive. <laughs> Killing someone with climbing spikes. I played Tomb Raider 2. As it always is in this show, during battles, armies always press their attack at least five minutes later than what would make sense, needlessly losing lives due to the delay. Need it below. Yes. Yes. Yes! Hang on, while the mammoths were charging the gates, arrows were clearly being fired from atop the wall. Yet from this scene, we're led to believe that Slint, being in command, apparently was stopping all arrows from being fired. Also, if John is ordering every person to fire in sync, then surely these arrows should all be landing at the same time, rather than a continuous, steady rain of arrows. <laughs> Judging from the distance and arc that that arrow whoop slash blister belt was fired at, that man should have landed at least several hundred meters away from the wall, certainly outside the walls of Castle Black. But gruesome transition shot, everyone. Why is Ollie preemptively raising the elevator to the top? Surely people may want to go up to the top of the wall from down here as well as come down. Hop was clearly trained by Sir Gordon of House Ramsay. Now that is one epic cook. For some reason, Slint doesn't just leave. Or is this the only room in Castle Black with a lockable door? A lockable door that even Sam has the keys for, therefore making it irrelevant that it is lockable. I'm pretty sure that if that gate is as strong as Sir Alistair was boasting, those ropes are gonna snap before the gate does. The outer gate won't hold. It won't, but you could just drop some more barrels or fire some more arrows on them, now that the giants are preoccupied with attempting to break open the gate. Ah, the old McDonald's tragedy of grabbing a handful of ketchup sachets. Truly sad. Find the weapon, Ollie! Fight them! Child soldiers. Well, at least both sides seem to suffer from the deploying battle tactics five minutes after it would make sense to problem. The right. Science, anyone? <laughs> this giant hasn't been killed by falling men yet. Also, why not do this in the first place? If one giant can do it after going Rambo from witnessing his friend die, then surely two can do it no sweat. Show rips off Darth Vader scene from Rogue One before Rogue One even existed. We need you, boy. How does Ghost know who to kill and who not to kill? Unless Bran is somehow warged into him, I'm pretty sure Ghost will just kill as many brothers as wildlings. Egret does not shoot this twat. <laughs> Main character that does not require an entire bushel of arrows to kill. Nothing, the showrunners really are trying to make this a forced meme. From the side, boys! <laughs> Why is this called a scythe? It looks more like an arrowhead, or an anchor, than a scythe of all things. Also, something that large slicing through the wall cannot be good for structural integrity. I want to find manners. You can't do that. No one gave you any orders. Who's left to give orders? Sir Alistair. He's still alive, isn't he? Also, why, of all the survivors, would John go? Sure, he may be the de facto head of the Night's Watch with Sir Alistair out for the count, but the Wildlings really hate John for double-crossing them. Walking into the light. <coughs> the weather just went from a brisk, clear morning to the Shia LaBeouf forest in five seconds flat. Lightwalkers, anyone? You know, if there's a hundred thousand wildlings just north of the wall, then no one, not even Mance, can possibly know the face of every single one. Why not dress someone up in wildling clothes and actually attempt an incognito assassination? Where's Jack and Agar when you need him? I was loyal to him and 
into my night's watch vows. All your vows. Yep. Unless he grit had a child at some point off screen. They're about to drink rotten milk. <coughs> that's not wine. No, that's a proper northern drink, Jon Snow. That's racist. One of our giants went into your tunnel and never came out again. Mag the Mighty. He's dead. He killed my friend Gren. He was that king, the last of a bloodline that stretches back before the first men. Giants have kings. Also, giant bloodlines. My people have bled enough. We're not here to conquer. We're here to hide behind your wall. Just like you. We need your tunnel. I mean, really. If all you're trying to do is get south of the wall, there are ways that don't involve pissing off the entire realm. Take a boat for f**k's sake. Manus to the rescue. Also, if the Iron Bank really wants to have a reliable king on the Iron Throne, then why didn't they give him enough money to buy an army and navy capable of straight up attacking and capturing King's Landing? Also, unless these horses have been sprinting the 150 miles between Eastwatch and Castle Black, why didn't Eastwatch send a raven to Castle Black, informing them of the reinforcements on the way? That's a lot of horses. Unless you source them locally, it must have been a logistical nightmare taking them across the narrow sea. <laughs> the best way to beat wildlings is on the horse pack, apparently. You don't even need to be travelling at galloping speed. Who knew? We do not kneel. Reddit. You're speaking to the one true king boy. You will address him as your grace. I know he's the king. My father died for him. How does John know that? Surely the only ravens sent to Castle Black regarding the matter would have been from King's Landing, and they wouldn't have gone any further than the Starks are treasonous c**ts now. Deal with it. Ned Stark's son. Your father was an honourable man. Why is the only thing remembered about Ned Stark is how honourable he was? I mean, sure, he was pretty damn honourable, but for once I'd like a character to make a remark about his haircut or something. May, may I ask what you, what you think you're doing? Saving him. None of these bottles appear to be marked. How does Kyburn know the contents? No maester knows how to save them. That is exactly the sort of arrogance that had him expelled from the Citadel, Your Grace. His curiosity was deemed dangerous and unnatural. Rightly so, in my opinion. Isn't curiosity meant to be the entire premise of the Order of the Maesters? Your Grace, this, this, this is my laboratory. Not anymore. If Cersei really hates Pycelle that much, then why is she compelled to keep him around? You can save him. Difficult to say, Your Grace. But if my past work is any guide, you stand a chance. Kyburn has experience in creating discount Darth Vaders. Everything they say is true about Jamie and me. No. no Your legacy is a lie. No. I don't believe you. His legacy? Joffrey, Marcella, and Tommen aren't part of what Tywin considers his legacy. Also, if Tywin doesn't consider the aforementioned as part of his legacy, how will Cersei's children with Loras be any different? Okay, now they're serving wine to the bloody cameraman. With my master, I was a teacher. I had the respect and love of his children. What is it that you want from me? Your Grace, I ask you to let me sell myself back to Master Migdal. Hang on, if Daenerys hasn't allowed the former slaves to work under the Masters in any capacity, then how has it taken this long for anyone to complain about it? How much work is available in Marine that is not overseen by the Masters? Approach, my friend. He never stopped approaching. Even though Drogon was the one to eat the little girl, Daenerys decides to lock up Rhaegar and Viserion, even though they did nothing wrong. Also, Daenerys has apparently forgotten that the ultimate downfall of the Targaryen dynasty was their lack of dragons due to chaining them up and letting them wither away generation by generation. Seeing as a dragon's neck has the same girth as their head, there should be nothing stopping the chains from just sliding off over their head. They died! Protecting men, women, and children who will never know their names. Well, seeing as they gave Stannis an intact castle to garrison at, I wouldn't say that yet. I don't know what happens to the prisoners. Who decides? I suppose Stannis does. 
Are you a king now? I don't have a king. That's treason. You spent too much time with us, Jon Snow. You can never be a kneeler again. Even though all of you had, and for the moment, still have a king. Also, apparently, the cameraman is still very much drunk. She belongs in the north. The real north. You understand me? Take her body 200 or so feet north of this location or something. That's the real f***ing north. Walking away from something going up in flames without looking at said thing cliche. Where the clearing when reaching final destination cliche. Characters are only attacked a few dozen meters from safety cliche. Oh my, that's CGI. It wouldn't be a proper season of Game of Thrones without at least one direwolf ex machina. I was getting worried there. Bran waits this long to walk into Hodor or Summer. <laughs> Bran, who hasn't received any kind of sword training since he was paralysed at age 10, is somehow able to hold his own in the sword fight, while walked into a foreign body. Wait, what? Jojen is fine in this shot, and looks more than ready to be able to get up and continue fighting. Yet in this shot, he looks like he is bleeding out and or getting sucked off. But hey, Jojen is useless now. Eagles? I know you need to burn his body and all, but blowing him up seems a bit overkill, especially with his sister watching. I've been watching you. All of you. All of your lives. With a thousand eyes and one. The three eyed raven sounds like a sex offender. He died so you could find what you have lost. You're going to help me walk again? You'll never walk again. But you will fly. But before that, I will turn into Max von Sydow. Also, Bran apparently had the ability to fly at one point. Seems legit. Podrick! I hobbled them last night. What sort of hobble? Figure eight, like you taught me. If you did it like I taught you, then the horses would be here. Where would you tie it up, though? I can't see any fences or trees around here. People coming. You can sh later, there's people coming. Has the Hound forgotten that there's still a rather large price on his head? Why would he stop on the summit of a bloody mountain if he hasn't? Are you a knight? No. But you know how to use that sword. And you've got proper armour, and you've got a squire. Hmm. Who taught you how to fight? My father. Mine never wanted to. Said... Fighting was for boys. And you were, well, 11 or something. Also, he did teach you how to fight. It's just that he didn't know how to fight in a style appropriate to your physical build and your sword. My mother's dead. I know. I wish I could have been there to protect her. Why didn't you? Oh, come on. There were literally thousands there that were sworn to protect her, and they all failed all the same. Fancy sword you got there. Where'd you get it? Brienne of Tarth. Tarth is a noble house. Is it so stunning to the Hound that she's carrying a fancy sword? I've been looking at Lannister gold all my life. Isn't all gold Lannister gold? Safety! Where the f**k's that? Her auntie Neary's dead. Her mother's dead. Her father's dead. Her brother's dead. Winterfell is a pile of rubble. There's no safety, you dumb bitch. The Wall. Jon Snow. The only reason you didn't take her there is because Jon can't pay like Lysagood. But no, we need Arya to go on more misadventures. Why? Just because. Ah! I'm glad the director chose to cut every quarter of a second, because I almost figured out what was going on. Ah! He survives this. Also, you should know by now that leaving gravity to seal the fate of your adversary rarely succeeds. Big bitch saved you. I don't need saving. No, not you. You're a real killer. With your water dancing. And your needle. Even though she hasn't killed anyone with water dancing, and every kill has been on unsuspecting and or unarmed men. You're gonna die. Unless there's a maester hiding hide behind that rock. There pretty much was a maester hiding behind that rock. I'd skin your life for wine. Even though you fatally injured yourself attempting to protect her. Going out alone. You won't last a day out there. 
I'll last longer than you. That's pretty easy to say to a man who is currently bleeding out. Your pretty sister. I should have taken her. That night the black water burned. I should have f***ed her bloody. At least I'd have one happy memory. So if f***ing someone would have given you one happy memory, does that mean you've never f***ed someone in your life? Also, falling down a cliff is apparently the best way to remove lifelong scars. Or makeup. Do it. I watch Revenge of the Sith too. Kill me. Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! My internal thoughts when finishing this video. Jamie, who supposedly can't even kill a kitchen mouse, managed to kill at least two guards guarding the cell of a man guilty of regicide. The maximum security dungeon has a secret passage leading directly into the Tower of the Hand for some reason. I'm sorry. I believe that's the second person in this series to be killed by gold chains. Granted, they weren't molten this time. Why is Joffrey's crossbow in Tywin's room? Why isn't it in Tommen's room, like all Joss or other old things? Damn. Tywin isn't reading a newspaper. I'll go back to my chambers and speak with some dignity. I can't go back there. She's in there. Well, are you afraid of a dead whore? <laughs> Literal trigger word. So the bells are ringing following the discovery of Tywin's assassination. And for some reason, the city is not put on lockdown like it was after Joffrey's assassination. Ah, I was wondering where all my salt was going. Please. I could work scrubbing the floors I'm not of... going north, child. I'm going home. Where's home? The free city of Bravos. Wait, I have something else. Nah, I'm not going to attempt to reunite with my closest childhood relative. I'd rather go to some foreign city because Discount Ginger Fabio told me to. Also, you could just find someone else. There were multiple ships in that harbour alone. I feel like this is a statement on life choices. How did you? Valar Morghulis. I know there's some kind of honor bound thing that if a Bravosi citizen comes across someone who presents them with a coin and says a phrase that is practically the motto of Essos, then they have to take them to the House of Black and White. But just 20 seconds ago, this girl was begging to be taken to the wall, and then when the merchant reveals his place of origin, suddenly she's either a recruit for the faceless men or a faceless man herself. I, personally, have my doubts. Also, does every person who leaves Bravos have to be instructed to do this sort of thing? <laughs> Yay! I is finally leaving Westeros. I definitely won't be clawing my eyes out every time she's on screen for the next two seasons. <laughs>